differential equations and solutions. I will be giving a very basic introduction to the topic, starting pretty much from zero. I will cover this stuff here. To cope with the subject of differential equations, you need to have a pretty solid background in basic calculus, and that means derivatives and integrals. In this talk, I will be doing a few simple derivatives. So what is a differential equation? Call them DE for short. An equation relating a function to one or more of its derivatives. And these functions are called solutions or solution functions. Now, a brief technicality. I'm going to be talking about ordinary differential equations, which are ones that have solutions in the form of a function of a single variable. And you can call the variable whatever you want. I'm calling it x. There are other kinds of differential equations and some other terminology that I'm skipping over. If you want to get up to speed on some of that stuff, I have another video for you. So what does this mean? Well, here's an example. Here's a function. Here is the derivative of that function. Here's an equation. There's the function. There's the derivative of the function. Is this what we mean by a differential equation? The answer is no. If you go to solve this equation, this is what you get. Well, that's not what we're looking for x equals 0 or x equals 2 is indeed a solution of this equation. But the whole point of a solution function in differential equations is that the solution function should be valid for all possible x values, not just a couple. So this is not at all what we're talking about. Let's look at some different examples. So here we have a couple of actual differential equations. There's the solution, there's the derivative, there's the solution, there's the derivative. For both of these, y equals x squared is a solution, and it's easy to verify that. Just substitute y equals x squared uh, divided by x. There you have it. y prime equals 2x, just like we already knew. You can do the same thing for this other one down here. And of course, you can make up all kinds of differential equations for y equals x squared or for any other function you can think of. But that's not the point of differential equations. The point is to do the opposite. You start with a differential equation, and then you find the solutions that fit that differential equation. Now, it turns out that y equals x squared is not the only possible solution for this differential equation. Here's another solution. You can check for yourself, verify that that is indeed a solution. Here's another one. And there's more. Each and every one of those is a solution and you can verify that for yourself easily enough. All of these are called particular solutions. And there is an infinite number of them. In fact, any function at all that's in the form of a constant times x squared will be a solution to this equation. The constant could be anything. It could be negative, it could be irrational, it could be imaginary, and then uh, y equals zero is also a solution. To keep track of all these solutions, we summarize them in the following way. All of these can be represented by one simple formula that looks like this. Every single one of those is in the form of a constant coefficient times x squared. Even y equals zero. If you set c equal to zero, you've got y equals zero. Since this summarizes all of the possibilities, we call this the general solution. Now it turns out that this differential equation has different solutions from this. Here's a few.
and there are plenty more. So all of these particular solutions follow the same general format, which is this. And that's our general solution. Now uh, this version, where the arbitrary constant is in the form of a coefficient in front, is what you see most typically, but not always. You do see this often enough that it's easy to get in the habit of expecting it every single time, so watch out for that, because even if x squared is a solution for this, putting a coefficient in front of it like that is no good. You can check that yourself. Just uh, take the derivative, plug it in, see how it works out. Fine for this, no good for that. So here's an example of a typical basic differential equations problem. So there's a whole lot of new things going on here. Let's take them one at a time. First of all, we're looking for a solution in the form of x equaling a function of t. So I've changed up the variables here. Before it was x and y, and now it's t and x. Either version, x and y or t and x, shows up a lot, so you need to get used to them which can be confusing because the variable x is commonly used as both a dependent and an independent variable, so you don't want to get that backwards. So here's the differential equation dx over dt equals negative x. That's essentially the same thing as y prime equals negative y. And now we have this initial condition, x of 0 equals 4. What's that all about? Well, let's take things one step at a time. First, let's just solve the differential equation. So step one is to, to find the general solution. This is the hard part. And I'm not going to show you how I would solve that. I'm just going to show you the answer. You can spend a semester or more learning how to solve differential equations. And I can't possibly do that justice in a couple of minutes here. My aim is just to introduce some basic ideas and some basic terminology. But it's easy enough to check that that is a solution if you feel like doing that. The next part is the easier part. You find a particular solution. And that's what you get from this initial condition. If there was no initial condition, then we would simply find the general solution and then we would be done. But the initial condition is now telling us we need to find one particular solution that fits this information right here. So what does this even mean? Well, this is telling us that the input variable equals zero when the output variable equals four. So this is essentially saying that t equals zero. So an alternative way to write this would just be to say x of t equals zero equals four. I find writing it like that often clears up a lot of confusion. Here's another version of the same thing. When t equals 0, x equals 4. And all that that means is that on your graph of your solution, there is a coordinate 0, 4, and the solution, the particular solution, has to pass through that. Now, we already know this is a decaying exponential, so it should look more or less like that. So how do we get this particular solution? Well, it's easy enough. You just substitute in t equals 0 and x equals 4 and see what you get for c. So there's x equals 4, and then there's t equals 0. And of course, e to the 0 is 1. So we get 4 equals c. And therefore, the particular solution is x equals 4 e to the negative t. Now this term, initial condition, refers to the fact that we're letting t equal zero. Very often in a differential equation, t represents a time variable. If this were a physics problem, t equals zero would be the moment that you start your experiment, the moment where you start the stopwatch. And of course the starting moment is the initial state, whatever you want to call it. So t equals zero is when you start, and then this x equals four 
means an initial value of something, could be initial position, initial velocity, it could be initial anything really. That's where your starting point is, and then you go from there. So initial is implying time. Now the truth is, t doesn't have to represent time, it can just be an abstract variable, and we still use this term. Now a condition doesn't have to be initial. You could have x of 1 equals 12, or x of pi equals negative 9, whatever you like. If t is not equal to 0, then this is not initial, but it's still a condition, and you would still do the same thing. You would still substitute for x and t and find the value for c. In a differential equations class, it's pretty rare to have a condition that's not initial. So it's easy to get in the habit of assuming that t is always equal to 0, but you need to remember that it doesn't have to be. If that was helpful to you, please like and subscribe. Also, if you are interested in being tutored online by me personally, I am available. There is a link here to my website, and there's also a link to another video I made about differential equations. I'm planning to do a whole playlist on differential equations, and that might even be up by the time you see this.